I have no idea when the last time I did a podcast was. It's been a while, but that's not really the reason I don't remember. The reason I don't really remember is because lithium has been fucking with my head. I mean, in a way, that's what it's supposed to do. Actually, it's what it is supposed to do. Like, that's what was prescribed was to fuck with my head, but like not in the way that it was fucking with my head. Hello. Welcome. I'm Alan. This is going to be, you know, a podcast, and you've already heard some of them if you have heard of them, and if not, welcome back in. So yeah, I have stopped taking lithium with doctor's permission. I am still on Abilify, which is another antipsychotic, and things are better in a lot of ways right now, and I'm really, I'm really liking that. It's tough to gauge everything right now i stopped taking the lithium about i don't know a little while ago four weeks ago ish and so it it apparently takes some amount of time for it to get kind of out of your system and i've really really been feeling the difference over the past week or two part of that also has been that i've been doing so i have felt better i have felt more connected to time i have felt more like oh wow this is just weird okay this is gonna be a weird one for me which means it might be a weird one for you. So hope you enjoy the ride. I don't know. I've never felt like this before. And I'm wary whenever I say statements like that because I went 40 plus years of my life feeling one particular way, like with a a, a kind of base level mental model of how my brain worked and how things worked and how I worked. And that was the existence that I knew. And that was untreated bipolar disorder. I had my first manic episode when I was 42, like my first full-blown manic episode. I was hypomanic or high functioning, something, something, something. But I, I never, I never went like all the way out manic until I was about 42. And then I ran around my house naked recording a podcast where I was going to be president and fixing the world for two weeks. And then I went to the hospital into the psych ward where they started giving me antipsychotics. And then we had two years of depression and that really sucked. I I've talked to some about that. There will be more conversations about that, but that's, that's just the, the minor, like a quick backstory for how, how we got to here. And that was, so that was at the end of 2017. It is now the middle of 2024. And at the end of 2017, I had my manic episode, which was just, fucking wild like i it, it's also it's it's really interesting to me because like i i i had decided slightly before i had the actual manic episode like the full blown manic episode like to report, record a podcast so i have recordings of my entire manic episode my entire first manic episode where there's lots of parts where i'm sitting there and like i don't know what's going on right now i know something's different so i'm just gonna Like, I don't know what it is, but I'm going to describe to you what I'm feeling because what I'm feeling is not what has happened before. And I'm recording, I have this recording device in my hand. So whatever. So like at some point I will kick all that stuff over to the internet and be like, here you go, internet. If you are a, I don't know, a psychology student, here's what a manic episode looks like for somebody who didn't know that they were having one. I didn't know I was bipolar and I didn't know I was having a manic episode. I just knew like in in the middle of the week in the middle of the first week or at some point i don't know time is very very fuzzy at that point that something was definitely and i'm not going to use the word wrong because at the time i don't think i would have described it as wrong but it was definitely different and there was definitely something happening and there was definitely something going on so it was like hey you future psychology student Here's what I'm thinking right now. And here's what's in my head. So at some point I'll release all that stuff. I, I, I still haven't gone back and edited and looked at that stuff yet. I'm, I was advised wisely not to look at it for a while because when I first was, I was just like, oh, I want to go edit all this stuff. And my therapist was like, no, why don't we just let that sit? We're just going to let that be there and be its own thing and just kind of not not really have to mess with it right now. And and you're going to be okay with that. And I said, you know what? That, that does make a lot of sense. The fear being that like seeing that might've like, I believe the word my therapist used was like decompose back into having problems with it. So cool. No problem. Still haven't looked at it. But then after the manic episode, 
there's a two year time period of super major bipolar clinical depression or bipolar depression. I don't know what the official term is, but like really shitty bipolar depression, bipolar one, by the way. So there's two different versions of bipolar, apparently bipolar one and two, I don't know, maybe there's more, but bipolar two is less severe. Bipolar one is more severe. Bipolar one is what I have after a manic episode. You often have a depressive episode. Manic episode lasted for a few weeks for me. Depressive episode lasted for a couple of years at least. And it was super awful and just a struggle. And like, I actually, so a, a, a minor trigger warning here that things got dark to the point where I had to go back into the hospital. I won't get into that right now, but we'll, we'll talk. I've, I've talked about that before. We'll talk about it again at some point, I'm sure. But for now, just know that like it got dark to the point where I had to go back in the hospital for my own safety on the depression side of things, not on the manic side of things. As I was getting the treatment cocktail, the treatment regime set up for how to deal with this. I went through at least 33 different med changes. I have notes on 33 of them. There were maybe one or two more that I didn't totally get, but I ended up on this cocktail that included lithium. And I think the lithium actually got prescribed sometime in 2018. Cause again, this was a two year time period of getting uh, these adjustments happening while I was trying to get out of this depression. Cause the other, the other thing that happens is when you have bipolar episodes, brain damage occurs, which I did not know that. I mean, I didn't know anything about bipolar disorder really prior to all this happening, but one of the things I've learned about is the fact that when you have a bipolar episode and that can be either the manic episode or a depressive episode, it causes brain damage. Like your brain does weird shit and it puts uh, the way my psychiatrist described it, it's like, yeah, it causes lesions in your head. I've also heard them described as holes in your head. I don't remember the specific number, but like it ain't good. Your brain heals. Some of that damage is permanent. Some of it heals. I still feel like me. I was really nervous when I was first going through that because I was in the kind of the depths of the depression. I did not feel like me. I was just like, I was in a bipolar depression and like I didn't have feeling. Like I, I would drive down the highway, beautiful weather outside. I was driving down the highway on the coast with my hand out the window at sunset and just, and I could, I could physically feel that the air was like, coasting over my fingers right I could feel the feeling of the wind but I had no feeling about that and I I don't have the language really to describe what that lack of feeling is like because I don't think we can really I don't have any other experience in my experience to cross that to like to make that clear so when I don't have so I don't have I don't have that language I don't have that that uh, whatever to describe to you what that was like. But as I progressed through that, I got on this cocktail that got me back to a point of stability and my brain healed back up as much as it was going to heal up. And I ended up on this cocktail um, that involved lithium. And let me be super clear, super clear, like way up front here. This like, I'm not, this is not a, like, just don't do lithium or lithium is bad or any of that stuff. This is just, I have discovered that for me, as I'm experiencing things right now, lithium was over medicating me when it was part of the other cocktail that I had going on with me. Cause I had, I had some, I had um, a few different things at different points. Lithium was one of them. I have now removed the lithium from my cocktail and my God, I feel so much better. And, and, and the, and the craziest thing is like, I can sense time again. Because, of course, the other thing that happened when all this happened was as I came out of that depression, uh, which started at basically the start of 2018. So the manic episode was the end of 2017. And then the, the depression started in basically 2018 and went through about 2020 and then into 2020 some. And that's when we got into the pandemic stuff, I think. Wasn't that about when that happened? So, like, every like everybody started having weird things happen in terms of like all the isolation and like learning how to live in the new world of the pandemic was an adaptation for everybody. And so everybody got isolated. I also got isolated, but I just, and so I, I came to this, I, I came to this new reality where I 
I, I got this isolation thing happening and I just, I, I, it felt right because that was about all I could handle. What I didn't realize was I was at that point still kind of over, or I was over medicated at that point, or I don't know over medicated is the right word. Like, I don't want to use harsh language here. I just, I, I, I kind of lost my sense of time and I lost my, my sense of connection to things. People will describe uh, lithium sometimes as having like a fog to it. I didn't really think of it as a fog because that's kind of a visual thing for me. And there wasn't really a visual aspect to it, even though weirdly I've talked before about how my senses changed just a little bit on lithium. Colors looked slightly different and sounds sounded slightly different. Super weird. We'll tangent on that at some other point. This, this isolation thing happened and everybody that I talked to was like, yeah, time is so weird right now. I don't have a good sense of time or whatever. So I just kind of thought that was the I, 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 I labeled what I was feeling as the same thing that everybody else was feeling. But of course, I was in a brand new world for me in terms of having for the first time a healed up brain, but then also being on the on the cocktail for the bipolar disorder. So when that time continued to move forward, I didn't recognize that the same language that we had been using about like not having a sense of time was really was like way more for me until recently. And I kind of kept not like I kept not doing stuff. I, I quit my job. I couldn't I couldn't quite focus on things. I couldn't quite do things. I was just barely keeping up and decided to quit my job. Now, of course, I was I was also burned out. I was also coming off a two year depression of bipolar disorder. I had had a 20 year career at my organization. Like it didn't seem all that wild, but like if I feel, if I felt then like I do now when I'm not on lithium, I, I don't think I would have quit my job. I think I would have, I think I would have hung on to it. TBD because again, burnout was in there and recovery and all those things. By the way, I had the best boss in the world. The only reason I lasted, I think, Pretty succinctly, I can say is because I had a really great boss and team around me and they were super supportive. And my God, I can't thank that crew enough for all of that because they were they were there with me the entire time and had my back. And you, I, I can't imagine what it would have been like. So, OK, here's the thing. I'm one of the luckiest motherfuckers you're ever going to meet. And like I name it, whatever. It's fine. So like the fact that I had bipolar disorder and the fact that like had some shitty stuff happen, like that's super minor compared to all the luck that I've had in my life. But even in that, the luck that I've had with having the team that I had and the boss that I had when I went through bipolar disorder and the friends that I have and the therapists that I have, like, I don't know. I, I feel this like actual little bit of moral obligation to try and make the world a better place because I've been so lucky with all this stuff. And one of the reasons I, I talk about the bipolar stuff and that I that I'm a, a public with it, upfront with it, whatever, is because if I can't talk about this shit, ain't nobody can. Like I'm a straight white dude, right? My one little you know not uh, straight line thing is the bipolar disorder. But if I can't talk about that, ain't nobody else can talk about it. And like, and I'm even I'll 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 own to being a little bit nervous about talking about it. I'm not super nervous about talking about it, but like, there's a little bit of like, hey. If I have now stated repeatedly publicly that I have bipolar disorder, some people won't hire me. After that transition period of the pandemic and then quitting my job, I then further isolated because I was no longer going back around other people at the office, right? I, I like so we weren't in the office, so there was isolation. But even as people started going back to the office, that's when I left uh, when I left my gig. The other thing that I had going for me was I was on Discord a bunch with a bunch of, of other people playing games and stuff, which happened naturally during the pandemic because that's one of the ways that people connected a bunch was things on Discord or Zoom or whatever. My my particular uh, place was Discord. Shout out to the Party Corgi Discord. It, it's really interesting because I would have these conversations with my therapist about like making sure that I wasn't isolating. But of course, at the time, I wasn't isolating in the same way that everybody else wasn't isolating, which was getting on Discord or getting on Zoom or getting on whatever it was that your social network was because we like you couldn't go out and you couldn't go do things. But then as we started being able to do that, I left my gig and then I continued to isolate and I continued to just not go do stuff. I just didn't have any interest in it. I still liked talking to people on Discord. I talked with them less 
a little bit because some of them didn't come on as often because as the pandemic opened up, more and more people spent less and less time on Discord and more and more time out in the real world or in the real world, whatever, like out, not on Discord. But there's still there's still a queer of us who hang out on Discord a, a, a whole lot. So I still had that going and I didn't I didn't realize that I was isolating as much as I was isolating because I wasn't in my mind. I would make an argument still that I wasn't because I was having these connections with all these people. It just wasn't physical and I wasn't going and doing stuff. And that's really, I think, the key. It was easy for me to just jump on Discord and hang out. And that was great because I didn't have to go anywhere and I didn't have to do anything. I would just jump on and we could hang out or play games or do whatever. But there was no like having to go prep to go do something, like having to go like drive somewhere or do something. And I, I recognize now as I've gotten off this stuff, also it's super interesting. I'm really, so side note, there's gonna be some side notes in here. But one of the side notes is I'm really curious to go back and listen to this because I want to hear my speech and my speed of voice right now. So here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a test. So for the next couple seconds, I'm not gonna talk. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want to make sure that I can actually stop talking. And I'll explain why in five seconds. Okay, welcome back. Like, depending on your podcast, that may have been zero seconds because, like, I actually waited five seconds there, but, like, some my podcast app will chomp that silence down to just instantly keep the next thing going. So th- there was actually five seconds of, of silence there. And the reason that's important is one of the things that happens with bipolar disorder if you're having a manic episode is this thing called pressure to speak. And boy, is it a pressure and boy, do you speak, especially if there's nothing to stop you and you're holding a a microphone and making a podcast. You can just talk for days. And I mean fucking days. I have so many hours of of footage and tape of recordings. It's going to be really super wild. But I, I, that was a little check for me just to make sure that I could actually stop talking. Because if I, if I was not able to stop talking for five seconds, I would actually have just called 911 and gone to the hospital. Uh, because that probably, like I'm excited right now. Like I'm enjoying this, but I'm not yet. And I don't know if I ever really will be confident in being able to be excited with also having to not check myself and be like, okay, am I actually too excited right now? Have I actually crossed into a, a the problem of mania or hypomania, which is like, I guess a pre mania, but, or like not full blown, but like whatever. I really don't think that's, that's happening right now, but that's, that's one of the checks that I can do. It's not a guaranteed check. The other thing is I don't have like racing thoughts really in my head right now, which is another one of the big things that I had with my, my manic episode. And I also don't have a delusion of grandeur because during my manic episode, I was pretty convinced that I was going to become president. I was convinced that I was going to become president. You can also have like delusions and get delusional to the thing, to the point where you think you are president. I did not have that. I merely thought that I was, it was inevitable that I was going to become president and that I was basically the modern Shakespeare or a modern version of Shakespeare and like, I don't know, Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak all kind of rolled in one to try and like save the world with making the internet a better thing again. And like what's super fucked up is I'm actually still working on all that stuff, not in a manic way because I really do think we can make the internet really cool. And that is going to be another topic that we're going to get into a bunch over the next, however many of these that there are where we talk about, God, okay, yeah, this is this is a little scattered. Like, welcome back, folks. This one's a little scattered. I, it's mostly been on track, but like, we're gonna jump for a little bit and talk for just a second about how one of the things that I believe is that the more people spend time doing creative things, the less likely we are to be assholes to each other. That's kind of my central hypothesis right now, or my central like working model of the world. And what I wanna do is try and figure out how to add tools into the world where we can work on creative things. I know how to build things that lets people build websites. So that's the thing that I'm working on. I'm going to try and build a website or not try. I am building and I've spent the past couple of years building a website builder that soon we will release to the world that will let people build their own websites and just fuck around with them and just fuck around with them. It's not going to be a thing for trying to build a business off of. 
it's going to be a thing so that you can make a website and fuck around with it and like post some content and do some shit and then like learn um, how to like change the colors on it and change the fonts and then change the design if you want to. And if you don't, fuck it, just post some content. Or if you want to not post content and just fuck around with the design, totally do that too. Like it's, I want to make it easy and I want to make it accessible. And that is the thing that I'm working on. And what's really cool is I wasn't sure until like right now if I was going to be able to do that because I've, I've spent like two years working on this thing and it's cool and it works. I just have to do the next iteration and get it out and actually like put some documentation on it and let people use it. It's called Neapolitan. Ne- no, sorry. It's called Neapolitan. No, Neapolitan. Sorry. There's two things. Neapolitan is the is a file format that you use to write the, your files. And then Neapolitan is the actual app, the, the website builder. And Neapolitan is the thing. You can go to Neapolitan.com right now and check it out. But if you don't download it, on June don't download it until July 2024 because it's not actually working quite right yet and you hang on hang off for it for just a little bit but you take take a look you can read about it and see it whatever I didn't realize this was gonna be an announcement podcast but there you go love it so I didn't know that I was gonna be able to do that for real and it's still I don't know how like I've got ideas for how that could work but I don't I think I'm I think it's just gonna be the thing that I work on and the thing that I put out there and the thing that I want to do but I haven't worked on it in the past week or two because I've kind of been adapting to this new version of not having a lithium in my system, which weirdly having a lithium in my system, the one thing that I was able to do was like stay just kind of like zoned and, and zoned in on this thing. I've, I've done like 40 iterations of this tool and it's it, largely it's been an exercise in reducing complexity and reducing complexity and re- reducing complexity, trying to make it as, as non-complicated as possible and to hopefully make it as accessible as possible. But now that I'm getting there, then the next question is like, how do you, okay, could I make a business off of that? Right. That's a natural follow-up, but I kind of am not going to worry about that right now, really at all. It's it, that's coming. Like I need to figure, figure out how that would work. And, and the way that I think I would do that. Well, I don't know. Let's just get into it. A way to do that would be hosting. You host the podcast, you host the podcast, you host, you host the website. Sorry. You have the app. The app builds websites. You host the website. People pay for hosting. That's cool. I'm actually not going to get into that right now. That's boring for this. For this, we'll deal with that later. The but the 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 real trick to kind of like wind it all the way back to the beginning is this whole is this whole thing with the lithium and with the the not being on it and with the feeling of not being on it and like I don't know, man. I'm just I am fucking optimistic right now in a way that I have not been in a long time. And I can say that in two different ways. I can say a long time as in several years, and I can also say a long time as in ever in my life. And both of those are true depending on the angle that you're looking at them from. Because it's been a long time for me to be optimistic because I'm a generally optimistic person. And I was optimistic prior to being – prior to my my initial run-in with the full-blown mania and the, and the starting in 2017 and just the the – the, the wildness that's happened ever since then. But also I've never been an opt like I've never had, my brain has never worked like this before because like we're, we're, we're made of chemicals. We're made of meat and chemicals. Right. And the chemicals in my head and the way that the synapses in my brain are firing right now, they never have before. And I don't mean that in the minute sense and that every sentence is always like every moment in time is always its own thing. I mean that in the sense of the overall configuration and construction. Like if you, if you rebuilt the way that my brain worked, this, this is a new version of it because the chemicals that are in there right now are causing the the machine that is my head and my brain to operate in a way that it never has before. And that's really interesting to me. And I don't know. I'm optimistic about it. And I'm optimistic about this idea of making the internet like I, I really think we can do this again. Like I not I really think we can. Like we have like we have the technology. I'm gonna spend some time working on this thing. Other people are gonna spend some time working on it. But it, it feels inevitable that we will get to a point where people will have the ability to do creative stuff on the internet for themselves. Cause right now you 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 can, but only to a degree that you're allowed to buy whatever app or social media network that you're working with or that you're working on. 
So like if you're on Instagram, you can do whatever Instagram lets you do, but you can't do anything else. And it's all locked into Instagram. And if you want to go somewhere else, you can't move that stuff realistically anywhere else. But like if it's just your website, you can make your website and you can do whatever you want to with it. And we have these little technologies, this thing's called RSS, really simple syndication or something like that. I forget what the actual acronym is. I think there's a hundred of them now, but where we can like, we could build, <laughs> we can build what amounts to social networks based off our web, based off all of our, based off all this stuff that already exists and based off these connections with these new things that people are building in the Fediverse, the Mastodon, and these other things that are that are not corporate controlled internet stuff. And those can also tie into the corporate controlled things, but we can move into a position where they don't have to be and ideally won't be the central location. So okay, okay. So back back to it just for just for a spoke. Here's here's the here would be the ideal goal. Everybody has their own website. Okay, well, that's actually the goal right there. I want everybody to have their own website. I want everybody to have the ability to have their own website. You don't have to have it if you don't want it. Also, if you want to have 30 of your own website, also cool. And you should be able to do effectively anything you want to on there. I'm not going to say anything because there are some caveats. Legally, morally, ethically, pick them. We have to be aware that the things that we're building and that we're making, if they are a generalist thing like this, can enable basically everything. So we have to figure out how we do things to control that. And I, and I don't mean control from like, uh, I don't know, that, that, okay, that's a rabbit hole I'm not going to get into right now. We'll, we'll talk about that at some other point because they're, they're like, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a rabbit hole and a Warren's nest or a something. I don't know. It's tricky, but I want you to be able to have your own website and I want you to be able to work on your website and I want you to be able to have a domain name for your website if you want it. But realistically, I just want you to have your website and be able to move it wherever you want. And I want you to be able to do whatever you want to with it. And I want you to be able to connect it up to other people's websites so that you can see what they're doing and they can see what you're doing and we can make it the websites. We can all make websites and we can make stuff and we can make cool shit and we can be less angry at each other because I think that would be awesome. And I think if we start making stuff again, or not again, I think, th I think if we start making stuff, I think if we give ourselves the tools to make things, we really have an opportunity now. With the amazing, amazing, amazing fucking capabilities that computers offer us to make cool shit and stupid shit and silly shit and fun stuff and amazing stuff and boring stuff and stuff and just create and be less pissed at each other because we're making stuff. We understand once you start making stuff, you're going to be less pissed at each other because that's part of making stuff. And I really want everybody to be able to do that. So that's going to be the thing I'm working on. Hope you enjoyed this one. Been a little bit of a ride, as they will sometimes and won't be sometimes. Who knows? Y'all be kind. Take care. We'll do it again soon. Until then, cheers.